Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I am Nicole and I live in India. And today I am giving a reaction to a really recent video from uh, Major uh, Gaurav Arya from the Chanakya Dialogues. And this is Michelle Obama versus Joe Biden. Who can beat Trump? And is Kamala Harris in the picture? We'll have to find out. We'll see what uh, Major Gorov has to say. Um, I really do enjoy watching his um, and listening to his perspective. Um, he is, uh, you know, very well, um, has a wealth of knowledge. And uh, I really like his opinion on the, uh, particularly the, you know, the Indo-American um, uh, um, uh, issues that are going on and things and I, I like hearing what he has to say about the U.S. and I'm currently in the U.S. right now. I did watch the debate uh, last week and uh, let's see what he has to say. Um, I'm interested. If you haven't already, please give a like, please give a subscribe and let's go. If the Democrats want a fighting chance against Donald Trump, they have to put Sleepy Joe out to pasture. They've got to retire this guy and then come up with a strategy. And how can you trust the nuclear button? How can you trust the future of the United States of America to a person who sleeps on the job? Now, this is a job. Ever since Barack Obama was president, Michelle Obama was seen as a very strong, independent woman. She's well-read, she's educated, she has a mind of her own, she's articulate. The Democratic Party has now been applying pressure on President Joe Biden. After that debate debacle, they're telling Joe Biden, you're too old, you should gracefully go. Point here is that Joe Biden doesn't know where he's standing. It is that he has totally lost it. His cognitive abilities have taken a nosedive. The Democratic Party, 32% of them feel that he cannot be president again. And Jen friends, I'm Major Garavari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Now, friends, uh, you heard about, uh, you know, uh, what happened in Joe Biden's debate against Donald Trump. And this video is going to cover a part of that. You know, Michelle Obama's potential candidacy for president in 2024 has garnered attention amidst concerns about Joe Biden's electability against Donald Trump. Now, why is that? First of all, in, in a very widely publicized presidential debate, uh, good friend Joe Biden went off to sleep and when he was asked, why did you go off to sleep and why were you so low? I mean, Trump decimated him in that debate. He said that I've been traveling around the world, I've crossed 100 time zones or something like that. And he said that, you know, because of that I fell asleep and he admitted as much, which was again a political blunder. He could have said something else. I mean, politicians fake it all the time. He should have just faked it. But then Joe Biden told the truth. He said, I went off to sleep. And they're saying that, how can you trust the nuclear button? How can you trust the future of the United States of America to a person who sleeps on the job? Now, this is a job. This debate, it is. it's very, very important. And that is how Americans make up their mind, ladies and gentlemen. They said, okay, yeah, this guy is sharp. This guy has got an opinion. This guy is going to do it this way and that way. You can't afford to go to sleep on your presidential debate. Now, former First Lady Michelle Obama has emerged as a strong contender who could potentially defeat former President Donald Trump in a hypothetical election matchup. Now, where is all this coming from? Ever since Barack Obama was president, Michelle Obama was seen as a very strong, independent woman. She's well-read. She's she educated. Is. She has a mind of her own. She's articulate. She and many people feel that it's high time America had a woman president. She's black, she's yes. a woman, she's super intelligent. And they're saying, why not Michelle Obama? Why not? Now, the only point is that Michelle Obama does not want to become the president of the United States of America. Recent polls indicate that Obama, which is Michelle Obama, who has not shown any interest in running for office, leads Trump by a substantial margin of 50% to 39, which means Trump is at 39, she's at 50. Now, this positions her as a powerful alternative for the Democratic Party. And you know what? The Democratic Party has now been applying pressure on President Joe Biden. After that debate debacle, they're telling Joe Biden, you're too old, you should gracefully go. Let somebody else take your place. They're saying it's simply not worth it because we will lose the elections. We will. We'll lose it. But yep. Joe Biden insists. He's saying I'm absolutely fine and there is nothing wrong with me. You're you too see, old. I'm, I'm not saying that... Uh, 
Donald Trump is the so ideal is president Trump. of the United States. Trump is also too old. I'm not saying that. They both need All to retire. Two people have done their primaries and two people have come out because of the blessings and the support of the people of the United States of America. That's what the American public threw up. I again reiterate, maybe Donald Trump is not the ideal presidential candidate, but the <sighs> point here is that Joe Biden doesn't know where he's standing. And uh, Joe Biden shakes hands with Im imaginary people and Joe Biden will greet imaginary people. He'll talk to imaginary people. I haven't heard of this. A lot of people feel that he's losing it. And let's I have heard that he's this is not potentially has dementia. the president of Timbuktu we're talking about. We're talking about the president of the United States, the most powerful individual on earth. Yep. The person who has access to thousands of nuclear warheads. Yeah. A budget like nobody's ever seen. A military like nobody's ever seen. This is a true superpower. And to rule that superpower, to, to handle that superpower, you need nerves of steel. You can't have an old guy sleeping on the job. And that is... Uh, you know, something that the Democratic Party is very worried about. And this comes after a debate, as I mentioned, where Biden struggled. Key figures within the Democratic Party have voiced their apprehensions. Now, what are these guys saying? They're saying you're too old. They're saying you should go home. Uh, they're saying that if the Democratic Party has a chance of winning at all, if at all, the Democratic Party has a chance of winning, it will only be when we remove Joe Biden from the equation. Now, everybody wants to win, ladies and gentlemen. That's true. Every single person wants to win. Nobody wants to. Nobody goes into an election saying, hey, it will be a great idea to lose. Yeah. Now, the Democrats also want to win, and so do the Republicans. But today, especially after that debate, so today the Democrats feel that the only thing standing, and it could be wrong, I'm saying their feelings and their opinions on this matter may be wrong, but this is what they feel. And I'm merely telling you what they feel. And many Democrats feel that the only thing standing between them and victory is Sleepy Joe. Yep. Now, uh, they voice their apprehensions and political historians and donors are also urging a re-evaluation of Biden's candidacy to ensure the party's success. Now, a lot of people have given millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. People say billions of dollars have been spent on the American elections. They've already been given. Now they'll be deployed. This money yeah. will be deployed. It's already being deployed. And everybody wants to know, hey, what are you doing with my money? I put my money on a Joe Biden who was awake. I put my money, when I say I, I don't mean myself, but I'm saying about the American donors, the guys with the big fat checkbooks, they have put their money on a Joe Biden who's awake. A Joe Biden who look after their political interests. A Joe Biden who has a finger on foreign policy. A Joe Biden who has a finger on, on, on geopolitics. Just imagine. Just imagine Joe Biden gets elected. And he comes face to face with Xi Jinping. Or even worse, he comes face to face with Vladimir Putin. God bless Joe Biden. They're going to eat Biden for breakfast. Biden won't know. He has seemed increasingly lost in the past yeah. couple of months. He was always lost. I mean, in the sense that for the past few years, he's looked lost. But in the past few months, especially, it is that he has totally lost it. His cognitive abilities have taken a nosedive. I As I mentioned agree. earlier, he's shaking hands with people who don't exist. He's talking I didn't to people see who this. don't exist. I don't... He's waving at a crowd that is not there. there is I'd like to see there. video the of this. Camera no, I'm it. not sure. I haven't seen that. But he had a brain freeze. I mean, I, I don't know what a brain freeze is, but that is what the American press, the American media is calling it. Everybody was dancing and Obama was dancing with Michelle Obama and other people were dancing and there was, there was this function happening. And Joe Biden just stood like that. He was like, yeah, he didn't move. I he didn't blink. That. He just stood there. And then very gently, very gently, Obama had to take him away. And you know what people are talking about, especially the Republicans, they're saying that Biden is being pumped full of drugs so that he can get through the day. He could when be. When I say but drugs, I don't mean cocaine and heroin. over 80 years I mean, old. Maybe steroids. How many 80 years? He's being pumped, you know, so that he can, Old people are not full of drugs. Day, otherwise, <laughs> Joe Biden would be sleeping most of the time. Now, however, Michelle Obama, and now we'll come back to her, Michelle Obama has repeatedly stated that she does not wish or she intend to run for the president of the United States. Despite the unwillingness to fight elections, her popularity remains very high. Huge. As I said... She's well-spoken, she's smart, she's independent, her. she's a woman, she's black. 
above all, I think I think the people really like her. She's got yeah. a certain charisma about her, which I, I you know, she it's very difficult it. to place a finger, but she generally <laughs> seems very pleasant. She seems like yes. a good person. That is what people say about her. Yes. That is what Americans say about her. Now, why are the Democrats concerned? All right. Concerns have been raised following President Biden's recent debate performance, where he almost fell asleep. I told you about this, guys. He fell asleep on stage due to a demanding travel schedule. Now, according to Reuters, both Biden and Trump maintain the same ground in the sense that they have not backed off from their positions. But uh, and he's saying that Biden is saying that, no, I have not lost ground and I was just sleepy and that's OK. He's saying that's OK. I am. And he also says that this is not an excuse. This is not a justification. I'm just trying to explain my point of view why I went off. To sleep, nobody is buying Sleepy Joe's, uh, you know, arguments. Nobody is buying it. Now, he's saying, however, the same poll indicates that 32% of Democrats think Joe Biden should end his re-election bid. Now, he this should. is coming from within the Democratic Party. Yeah. Right, guys? So, the Democratic Party, 32% of them feel that he cannot be president again. And his cognitive abilities, his physical abilities are now down in the drains. Now, yeah. friends, the same Reuters poll found that 81% of Democratic voters viewed Kamala Harris favorably compared to 78% who viewed Biden the same way. Now, which means that within the Democratic Party, ladies and gentlemen, there is a tangible shift and Kamala Harris has trumped Joe Biden. Uh, now, uh, additionally, 59% of Democrats see Biden as too old to work in the government, reflecting sure. similar too sentiments old. from a January poll. Oh, strong. Other prominent Democrats, too old. such as Vice President Kamala Harris, California Governor Gavin Newsom, Michigan Governor uh, Gretchen Whitmer, and Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker have all shown weaker polling numbers against Trump They're compared so weak. to Michelle Obama. I know. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the American elections stand. And uh, all said and done, all said and done, if the Democrats want a fighting chance in this election against this steamroller of a Donald Trump, Donald Trump has got the following of a rock star in certain sections of America. Yeah, yes. many people think he's a lunatic. Many people think he's crazy. But the fact of the matter is that many people support Donald Trump also. Many and if do. the Democrats want a fighting chance against Donald Trump, they have to put Sleepy Joe out to pasture. They've got to retire this guy and then come up with a strategy. Is it going to be Kamala Harris? Is mm -hmm. it going to be Michelle Obama? Let me know in the comments. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the question and answers. So the first question is from Sai and Chakrabarti. My question is that why don't you think the rise of the far right is the first step of fascism? What's your opinion of that? Or what's your opinion of this? Sai and Chakrabarti, uh, theoretically, yes, but not necessarily. The rise of the left does not mean that, for example, uh, in, in the UK, you see, in the United Kingdom, uh, you have... Uh, the liberals, the liberal party, now they're left-leaning. That does not mean that they want to make UK a communist state. Similarly, uh, between the far right and fascism, do certain things uh, join, if I may use that word? Yes, they do. But it does not necessarily mean that any right party or far right party will become a fascist party or any left-leaning party will turn entire Europe into a, a communist or a bunch of communist states for that matter. I don't think that is true. Okay. Somna they says, what is your point, Major Saab? Oh, okay, what's my point? <laughs> if immigration is tightened, Indians will suffer also. So there are two points, Mr. Somna. The first is immigration to another country is not your right. When I say you, I don't mean you. I mean the people who want to immigrate. It is a privilege given by the host country. It is. So please don't take it as a right. Please don't say that. No, no I will become a citizen of this and that country. It goes both ways. It doesn't work like that, number one. Number two, I'm not against immigration. Not at all. As I've mentioned in the past, uh, many of my own family members, you know. I think his sister is uh, in the They US. are living abroad and God bless mm -hmm. them. God bless them, absolutely. I am against illegal immigration. Me Why too. am I against illegal immigration? Because it's happening in India. It is. I, I, I'm sure you know what's happening in West Bengal. I'm sure you know what is happening from the northeastern states. All of them, or many of them, sorry, I beg your pardon. Many of them uh, are bordering uh, Bangladesh. You know what's happening with the Rohingyas. There are crores of people, literally not lakhs, but crores of people who are illegal immigrants who are coming into India. It is a national security threat. It's it a big problem, which is why I am against. I will not say that just because an Indian, okay, I'm an Indian, I'm a proud Indian, and just because another Indian goes 
to the UK as an illegal immigrant, I will not support that person. That person deserves to be in jail. Yeah. Like the Rohingyas and the Bangladeshis deserve to be thrown out of here. Any Bangladeshi who wants to become an Indian citizen, there is a right way to do it. You're welcome. You're most welcome. We love you. We honor you. And we are not against your being a Bangladeshi. We are not against your, your nationality. Not at all. Both of our countries are friends. We are not against you. But I am against Indians going illegally into any other country. Legally, go wherever you want. Illegally, absolutely. It doesn't matter. 100%. It doesn't matter to me. Arjun Raju is saying, Major Saab, the question you need to ask is, how many Palestinian refugees have been given asylum in Jordan, Syria, Egypt, Yemen and Lebanon? Answer is zero. These Muslim countries realize better than anyone the disaster this will lead to. Look what happened in Germany. Legally also Muslims must go and settle in the Muslim countries. There are 57 of them. No positive effect at all. Only destruction. Now they want Sharia law in all of Europe. Uh, Mr. Arjun Raju, you're saying that, Major Saab, the question you need to ask is, I've already asked this question so many times. And I understand and I totally agree with you. No Muslim country is letting in Palestinian refugees or Muslim refugees. They won't do it. They will not do it. Right? How many Rohingyas are in Saudi Arabia and the UAE? Please let me know somebody. Nobody's interested. And these people are gaming the system and getting into Europe. And soon, Europe is going to be Sharia compliant unless the right-wing parties wake up. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all that I have for you today in our video. If you like this video, press the like button. Subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Well, this one I think um, was uh, easier for me to agree with than uh, the last one. The last one uh, I had watched was on um, uh, uh, the Israeli conflict. If you'd like to watch it and you haven't already, I'll link it here in the uh, up here. Just check. Okay, so uh, I have to totally agree. I think um, Joe Biden needs to go. I. Uh, I think Trump needs to go. I think they're both too old. I think we need age limits and term limits in the U.S. Uh, for not just presidents, but also congressmen and senators. I think uh, there is way too many uh, older um, people, um, generally older white men, but there are older women uh, there as well. But I think we need um, term limits, age limits, and we need them right away. Both Trump and Biden are too old. And Biden, I think, uh, really has lost it um, mentally. I, I really think he's not uh, he's not there in terms of um, where we need him to be. Do I uh, give him a little bit of grace because he he does that? He's not. I don't think actually a very good public speaker. Um, he had a stuttering problem, and he was uh, he had a stutter. He probably still has a stutter. Um, so he's never really been a great speaker. But I think what we saw at or during the debate was not just a stuttering problem. I think there is definitely mental and cognitive decline. Um, in regards to um, Michelle Obama as a um, candidate, oh, I would love to see her run. I think so many uh, Americans would love to see that, but she isn't interested. And you have to actually want to be interested to be president, right? And in regards to Kamala Harris, you know, I was so excited uh, to have Kamala Harris as uh, the vice president, but really, what has she done? Oh, I mean, she's better in terms of Biden, but is she going to beat uh, Trump? I don't think she has a chance. So as much as I do, um, and I'm so supportive of her being um, the VP, um, I don't think she's gotten out there. I don't think she has uh, uh, won over the um, American public in the way that she may have uh, been able to if she, I don't know, if she didn't try or, you know, I, I don't live here anymore, so it's really hard for me um, to see, but I think the overall uh, perception, I, I don't see her winning against Trump, and I don't see any of the other candidates, um, the Democratic candidates, uh, being anywhere near him. So we definitely need to get rid of Biden, though. We're not going to have any type of a chance if uh, if that's our candidate, okay, as Democrats. Anyway, 
So I think um, it was a very interesting perspective. I really enjoyed watching this. And um, if you enjoyed watching my reaction, please give a like, uh, please give a subscribe. It is the easiest way to support my channel and I really very much appreciate it. As always, I love you and bye-bye.